Located in Mariana, Florida, the Arthur G. Dozier School for Boys served as a state reform school for troubled and delinquent boys. The school opened on New Year's Day in 1900 under the name the Florida State Reform School. For over 100 years, boys who were deemed, quote, bad were sent off to the reform school. But the definition of bad wasn't always consistent. Some boys at Dozier had committed crimes as serious as murder or rape, whereas others were only guilty of skipping school, smoking cigarettes, or running away from home. According to its original charter, the intention of the school was to, quote, provide a place where young offenders against the laws of our state might be separated from older, more vicious associates. While this promise may have portrayed an appealing institution with a mission to address poor behavior, what actually occurred behind closed doors was nothing short of a nightmare. At the time, the school was known as the largest juvenile reform facility in the country. With over 1,400 acres of land, the campus was secluded and closed off from the outside world. The facility was situated on a land parcel large enough to segregate students up until 1966. On the north side was the school's cemetery. The initial purpose of the cemetery was to serve as a final resting place for victims of numerous tragedies that took place over the years on campus. In 1914, a dormitory fire tragically killed six boys and two staff members. Four years later, in 1918, an influenza outbreak claimed the lives of ten boys. Sadly, the graves were unmarked, and records to help identify the bodies buried on site were not kept. As it turns out, the cemetery would serve a larger purpose in the coming years. Shortly after the influenza outbreak in 1918, student deaths became much more frequent under much more jarring and preventable circumstances. During their time at Dozier, boys were forced to perform arduous manual labor for hours on end. When they weren't working, they were living in horror. State investigators noted evidence that boys at the school endured ongoing abusive treatment including being chained to walls and irons, brutal beatings, and starvation. The abuse was persistent for years. Some of the most disturbing stories stem from a building known as the White House, a small shed on the premises where brutal beatings would occur. Several victims recall being forced to wait in a line outside while those ahead of them entered the White House. Inside, they were whipped with leather straps until they bled. The boys would be told to stay silent, as making so much as a peep would earn them additional lashes. They were given pillows that were stained with blood, snot, and tears to bite into. And one boy remembers seeing bits of lip left on the pillow from one of the students before him. The beatings were at the hands of guards, and many victims refer to a one-armed man as their most frightening abuser. Victims recall that he would put so much force into his lashes that one could hear the leather strap hitting the ceiling before it came crashing down on their body. These horrors were sadly not the only thing the young men had to endure during their time at Dozier. The story of one boy, George Owen Smith, demonstrates the extent of the abuse. Owen was sent to Dozier when he was 14 years old after being charged with auto theft. In 1940, after not receiving the routine letters her son had usually written her, Owen's mom contacted the school asking about his whereabouts. The superintendent at the time told her that Owen could not be located. When she notified the school that she would be traveling there to search for her son on her own, she soon after received a call informing her that Owen had been found dead. Owen's body was found badly decomposed under a house, and no cause of death was able to be determined. By the time the family reached Mariana, 
Owen's body had been buried by the facility. Owen never received a proper funeral, and the death certificate was withheld from the family. A boy who was last seen with Owen claims to have witnessed Owen running across a field, away from guards, who were actively shooting at him. Shocking treatment of students by staff allegedly continued for decades. The facility continued to take on new students, and by 1956, the overcrowding was at its peak. The Dozier School for Boys was now housing 698 students. In 1962, Florida Governor Claude Kirk toured the facility after numerous ports to the legislature warranted a state intervention. During his visit, the governor found holes in walls, leaking ceilings, a lack of proper heating, and bucket toilets. He called it a training ground for a life of crime. Despite this, not much changed. Administrators were replaced and reforms were called for, but no true change was said to materialize. Various state agencies had been responsible for overseeing Dozier over the course of its operation. Each of these agencies had conducted investigations into allegations of mistreatment and abuse, but none had resulted in a substantial change. By 1982, routine inspections continued to discover abhorrent mistreatment. Some reports detailed instances of students being hogtied as a punishment and being kept in isolation rooms for weeks on end. Finally, in 2011, after more than a century absent of accountability, the Dozier School for Boys closed. A final federal investigation prompted by allegations from a group of men known as the White House Boys led to the school shutdown. The White House Boys, named after the White House where countless whippings occurred, had unified and demanded their stories be heard. While the real-life nightmare that was the Dozier School for Boys has come to a close, the families of so many that were sent there continue to live with unanswered questions. Since so many on-site graves are unmarked, it's unknown exactly how many boys were buried at the school. In 2012, the state of Florida authorized a forensic anthropology survey of the site. Over 50 graves were found with many of them located outside the cemetery limits. In order to determine a cause of death for each victim, exhumations are required, but typically can only be done at the request of the families. Unfortunately, since some of the bodies have likely been buried for decades, identifying these families has been nearly impossible. Finally, Florida Governor Rick Scott authorized the University of Southern Florida in 2013 to excavate and exhume all bodies buried at the Dozier School for Boys. George Owen Smith's body was the first of many to be exhumed from the property, making headlines across the nation. Since then, forensic scientists have continued to search for anomalies in existing graves, gather fragments of bone and teeth, and attempt to find numerous bodies yet to be uncovered. In 2017, the state of Florida held a ceremony to officially apologize to everyone touched by the horrors that occurred at the Dozier School for Boys. While it appears that the state is finally taking responsibility for the atrocities that took place at the school, the memory and nightmares that so many endured will haunt them for the rest of their lives. My name is Scott. And thank you so much for watching. We're a group of curious and passionate humans, creating documentary style content for those who share our curiosity, ask questions, and seek to dig deeper in a world where almost everything isn't quite what it seems. We are Mystery Syndicate. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, leave a comment, and give this video a like. And to be notified when we post new videos, hit that notification bell. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon. And for exclusive merchandise, visit our website 
at www.mysterysyndicate.com. From all of us at Mystery Syndicate, thank you again. We sincerely appreciate your support.